Well, hey everybody, Jeff Williams here. Well, that's Jeff Williams at Car. All right, what are we doing today? We're gonna talk about gold today. Oh yeah! Now, for those of you out there that are new to my channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and click on that little bell. That way you'll get notifications when I make more videos. Cause somebody's been digging. You see that? You see it, boy? Look at that. Holes all over the place. Come on down the river, boy. Good time of the year to be sampling this area. There's some andesite right there. You see that? Plain old andesite. Oh, this is called propolite. This is what happens when you hydrothermally alter andesite. See that? You can still see a little bit of andesite right there. That's andesite. But it's been altered. Oh yeah, look at that. Look at that. Oh yeah. And this is why the mine dumps at Virginia City look like. They're all this color. You can see that the bedrock is andesite. See that? All right, where am I at? It's a six mile canyon right outside of Virginia City in case you haven't figured it out. And why is this important? Because this area is what's touched off the mighty gold rush up to Virginia City. Thousands of people came out here looking for the shiny, but they found tons of it too. Now I'm gonna give you a history lesson as we go up and I'm gonna show you where you can find your own shiny. Ooh, there's a butterfly. So come on, let's go! Oh yeah, look at that. Isn't that pretty like? See all that rusty, red looking material. <laughs> Ooh yeah, that's real good. Oh, stand up, look at that. Oh yeah, isn't that pretty? Isn't that real pretty? Oh yeah. See that, I tell you, check road cuts. You see that? You see it boy? And be careful if you come up here, people drive 100 miles an hour up through this canyon. Why am I getting excited about that? Well, look at it. I got some black manganese in there. Some really red, rusty gravels running through there. Oh, that's so nice. This is an important area. Why? Because in 1859, Peter O'Reilly and Patrick McLaughlin came up through here. They were sampling. They were coming up here and they were finding little pieces of gold. So they figured they'd follow it all the way up. Now, why am I getting excited? Because the gold they were finding, son, was in this really black, crumbly rock. It was all laced with gold. It looked real similar to that right there. Ooh, that's so tasty. Of course, I'm gonna have to sample that because I know there's gold in it. So they go wandering up the canyon here and they noticed the gold was getting bigger and bigger as they went up close to the top. Of course, when they got to the top, the gold got real rich, real pretty like, but they ran into a problem. I'll tell you what that's like up on the way. So, so you know what I'm gonna say. So come on, let's go. Now when Peter O'Reilly, Patrick McLaughlin came up here, they followed the gold all the way to this. This was the source, right here. Remember what I'm telling you to find the source? And this was it. This is the Ofer pit. And what they did is they started digging and digging. But there was a problem, son. They were up here working their claims and somebody came up on them. And guess who that somebody was, son? It was Henry P. Comstock. He come wandering up here and he said, Boys, I think you're on my claim. Y'all need to skedaddle. And they said, Son, you're out of your mind. This is our gold claim. We've been up here for weeks working it and he said well I don't think so I got papers to prove it of course he didn't have any papers to prove it he was just fooling them so what they do they came to a determination that it was easier for three men to work it than to sit there and argue and fight over it. so they all decided to join forces and start working this area right here the Ofer pit what a lot of people won't tell you is what was Henry P Comstock doing up here in the first place and why did he think this area was his now the backstory is real simple Henry P Comstock was taking care of a cabin for two guys Evan and Hosea Grosh. Now the Grosh brothers were up here earlier and they were up here looking around and they found a whole bunch of gold. They were the original finders of the Ofer pit. But they didn't have time to file a claim because they died, son, that's why. So legend has it is that when Henry P. Comstock was clearing out the cabin, he found a box and inside the box was a whole bunch of maps and the claim papers and some of this beautiful ore. <laughs> so what did he do? He followed the story up to here. That's what he was doing here. That's why he said he had legal claim here, but he didn't. He didn't even even had the paperwork filed under his name. Now what happened? They were finding tons of gold out here. It was all electrum. Remember what I told you about this deposit? Four and a half miles long and about 1,600 feet deep of deposit. Now this deposit is unusual, but it falls under the category of a bonanza type epithermal, low sulfidation. And that's the perfect type of deposit you want. The deposits here, they were all scattered about in the earth, like plums in a plum cake or raisins in raisin bread. So the hard part is, son, these huge bonanzas of masses of electrum were in these irregular pipe chutes, tabular bodies, scattered all throughout here. So it was real hard to figure out where they were. So they sunk shafts everywhere. Some of them hit them, some of them didn't. And that made people real mad because one shaft could hit like the CNC, hit a bonanza. And then right over right next to it, the ward shaft, they didn't hit nothing. 2,500 feet, zip. 
and nothing. What was the final story? You can only dig so far by yourself, son, before it becomes too labor intensive, too costly. So eventually the three guys sold their claims. Of course, Henry P. Comstock sold his for the least amount of money, and he gambled that away in no time. But he kept running around town saying, it's my load, it's my claim, it's Comstock load. So there you have it. And like I said, it all started here. We're on the north end of the load, and it goes for four and a half miles that way, right into Gold Hill. So I'm gonna walk around town, and I'm gonna take you down in the mines. I'm gonna give you some more history lessons. It's hard to imagine men went 4,000 feet down into the ground. Would you like to see what that looks like, boy? Would you? Well, you know what I'm gonna say then. So come on, let's go. This is what I wanted you to see. This is waste rock, or country rock as they call it. It's those big piles of dirt you see outside. Now this beautiful looking bluish colored material, this is the original Comstock load that I'm touching right here. Remember I showed you the north end of the load, and over that way is Gold Hill. That's on the south end of the load. See this? This tells you that it was boiling. And that's what happens when you have epithermal deposits. You have a lot of boiling going on. And that's where all your mineralization is gonna drop out. So you're gonna look for this type of pattern on your quartz. You're gonna have quartz agilera. You're gonna have this bladed quartz like this. Look at that bug right there. Oh, that's pretty too. Now, when you see these types of signs and rocks, you know that the mineralization is really close. When you have boiling and epithermals, that's when it drops out all your mineralization, mostly your gold and silver. That's where you get your electrum from. You know me, I'm always gonna find a way in. That leads right on in. Wow, look at that. There's the hoisting room right there. Ooh, that's a big old Westinghouse motor. There's a shaft. Looks like a lot of timber's been pulled out. You can see where the skip car would ride up to the top there. And then the back of it would keep riding up while the front of it would dump in. Based on the size of those rails, that must have been a big skip car. Yeah, that's all of Gold Hill down there. All right, I want to show you something else. Take a look at that. You see that? You see it? That's the New York mine up there, son. You see the size of the mine dumps? Ooh, that thing goes down forever. All right, now, why am I showing you this? Well, if you take a look up there by the top of the head frame, you're gonna notice two plates side by side, and that's for those automatic dumping skips. That's one of the few ones I've ever seen that still have the plates intact. All right, let's go on down here to the gate and then down to Silver City, and I got something special to show you. So you know what I'm gonna say, huh? <laughs> you better! You wouldn't know by looking at it today, but that was a very important part of this whole place. Because everything came up through that little pinch point right there. And they made sure that you paid to come up in here. Silver City's up that way. And then you can see the top end of Gold Canyon right there. And you can see where they've been digging the heck out of it down there. And then if you look down far enough, you can see where they dredged it. They brought a dredge in. And if you go down far enough, Gold Canyon empties into where? Dayton. Come on, you know this, son. Why is this important? Because down there at Gold Canyon, there's still gold down there. Oh, yeah! It all came from up here, Gold Hill. Now keep in mind, son, if you plan on going out there looking for that shiny, you better know what's claimed and what's not, because there's a lot of people out here that won't be too happy with you. Anyway, I'm gonna get on out of here. I thought you'd enjoy this video about the mother load up here at Virginia City. Yeah! And if you like today's video, you know what to do, son. Rate, share, and subscribe. And don't forget to hit that notification bell so you can know when other videos are coming out. Ooh, I'm gonna get back up there and get that shiny, because you know that's what I gotta have. So you know what I'm gonna say, huh? So come Come on, let's go!